when we felt that we rather just move out from the windows. Then this man comes in and smile and say, Mtu, kwenzagala. You will see that now this man needs service delivery. This is the man who speaks very softly, but speaks service delivery. The man is none other than our Minister of Rural Development and Land Reform, Ubaba Unkwinti Ezandeni. Your Excellency, Mr. President, I thought the program director was going to start something else, so I stood up <laughs> because there was a naughty man before her. Kele Vietmos, tremendous pastor of the sea. As a Nivarni, this var, eh? Maron's Slytherin. Fire leaf perum. All right. <laughs> Program director, thank you very much for welcoming the president as he walked in here. Thank you very much. Your Excellency, Mr. President, the people have welcomed you and the mayor has done so. That's my job is to have you up here. It's very easy. But I must thank the people of Beaufort West and the leadership here, including the, the leadership of the district municipality, led by our executive mayor, Comrade Njadu. The leadership of the college, the principal and the chairperson of the, of the board. Thank you very much. All councillors here, the elders of Beaufort West, this is the president. I can see the, uh, there's black, green, and gold over my mapaya. Hey, Aniva. The president needs no introduction. He is the president of the Republic of South Africa. Yesterday, Mr. President, I nearly said Comrade President. You know why I'm not saying it? Mr. President, is that yesterday we had a media briefing of the ANC as the ETC of the ANC. Now I was sent a tweet this morning. They said behind us was a big uh, black, green, and gold flag, and we were talking about programs of government. There was a complaint on, in tweet. Now we are governing South Africa as the African National Congress. We are not ashamed of it. We are proud of it. This is the president of the African National Congress. That president. He is the president of the Republic of South Africa. That's not a secret. You know it. You put him there. Comrade President, please address the people. Thank you, thank you. Please uh, let us sit down. Thank you very much. Honorable Minister, Minister Google and Gwenti, Ministers and Deputy Ministers, Members of the Provincial Executive, the Executive Mayor of Central Karoo District Municipality. Councillor Edward Jadu, 
Executive Mayor of the Beaufort West Local Municipality, Councillor Truman Prince, leadership of youth organizations, esteemed ladies and gentlemen. In 1985, a youth leader and promising young boxer from Beaufort West, Mantengosi Chaka Krashi, was shot and killed in a police raid on the 22nd of January. This happened 31 years ago, and it is very emotional to think back to the youth who had lost their lives to ensure that our freedom came. This year, being the 40th anniversary of the 1976 riots, we must also recognize the contributions of countless youth that have laid down their lives for the realization of a free and democratic South Africa we now enjoy. As we open this facility today, I want to dedicate it to these countless heroes and heroines who committed great effort and sacrifice to ensure that we live in a better country. The example they have set for us will be difficult to follow, but we should do our best to face and overcome our present challenges. Compatriots, the handing over of the Beaufort West Youth Hub to the Central Karoo community today is intended to provide a facility to the youth where they can empower themselves. The Beaufort West Youth Hub was officially launched on Mandela Day on the 18th July 2012 by the Minister of Rural Development and Land Reform, Mr. Kuki Lenguinti. This followed extensive consultation with local communities, youth in the area, the district and local municipality, and the rural infrastructure development branch of the department to develop the concept design. The construction of the Youth Hub commenced in October 2013 and was completed in April 2015. The Hub has a mix of facilities that provide the historic development of young people and for the community at large. The fully equipped skills center that is being operated by South Cape College will provide training in business administration and user uh, computing and early childhood development 
to 200 NERISEC participants per year. The ICT Center will also help all members of the local community access to free high-speed internet and information technologies and to be integrated to the larger global information community. The amphitheater and refurbished community hall are also intended for daily use by the larger community of this area. Fellow South Africans, to counter the scourge of drug abuse, alcoholism, and gangsterism that are ravaging our poor communities, we need to offer youth in these communities the same positive lifestyle, alternatives that youth in the wealthy suburbs are afforded by the situation. The world-class sport and recreation facilities available in this youth hub will provide young people from poor communities with opportunities to participate on a better footing and help transform sport in our country. The swimming pool is half Olympic size and is expected to host swimming clubs and competitive galas for the region. Hopefully, the next generation of Chad Leclos and Penny Haynes will come from this area. The Chimenezim was fitted out with equipment generously donated by the Virgin Active Group. This is the same quality of equipment that can be found in the best private gyms in the country. This gym shows that <clears throat> what can be done when government and the private sector form partnerships to develop poor communities. <clears throat> the combi courts can be used for multiple sports codes, such as soccer, netball, and hockey. Solar lighting around this court will allow young people the chance to play sport, keep into the evening without having to burden the community or the municipality with high electricity bills. These principles of sustainability are applied throughout the youth hub. From the water harvesting tanks to natural lighting in the gym, this facility proves that with prudent design, environmental and economically sustainability can be achieved. 
I trust that the community is aware of other investments in youth that government is undertaking. There is an innovative program called the Narisek National Rural Youth Service Corps, which is the flagship of the Department of Rural Development and Land Reform. This is a long-term program where only rural youth is targeted, recruited, and contracted for a period of two years. Essentially, the Narisek program is a skills development program. Its main objective is to develop the skills of youth from rural areas. Youth between the age of 18 and 25, 25 years old, from rural wards are recruited and then enrolled for training in various skills that will equip them, both with theoretical and practical knowledge to create employment for themselves and other people in their communities. Participants who have completed the training will be able to help develop their own communities. It is a critical component of Narisek that the youth must go back home to apply their skills in the rural villages they originate from. The Narisek youth must also share their skills with their families and friends. This, at the end of the day, will lead to the future development of our country by these graduates, and more especially, the rural areas. The youth was also involved in the construction of the youth hub, and the program is also established a cooperative for the youth in construction in order to do the maintenance of the youth hub. It is also busy setting up cooperatives to handle and provide security services to the youth hub and 10 learners in cleaning services in order to provide these services to the hub. Dear community, dear community members, this youth hub is a pilot project and the first of its kind. And with this one, as our first experience, we will roll it out to other provinces as well. So you are the first to have this. which has proven a point that the things cannot always begin in Johannesburg or Cape Town. We can also lead by having things that these big places don't have. It's absolutely a good thing for the communities here then you must accept that government 
even if it is based in Pretoria, is thinking of you, is aware of your existence. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, as government, the challenges facing the youth, such as unemployment, are our major problem and major concern. While the conditions for the youth are improving in the country, the social profile of youth report suggests that black youth in particular are still faced with many challenges with regard to absorption into the labor market compared to their white counterparts. But as government, we are implementing various strategies to equip the youth and to work with the private sector by improving incentives for the employment of the youth. It is precisely for this reason that we have packaged programs that focus on rural development in general and youth development in particular because this is a better and a matter very close to our hearts, the development of the youth. If you pay attention to the youth, you are in fact shaping the future of your communities. As we say, the youth is the future. And we need all to participate, including the youth, to shape the future. That is why we are very concerned about drug abuse with the youth, because it means by the time they reach our age, there will be something else. They will not be like us to make a contribution. Perhaps at my age, they will be very old. <laughs> Can, <laughs> no, because they've been not very, <clears throat> I'm talking about those who take drugs. They would not have been very responsible for their bodies. They are careless about their bodies. They don't care about it. Can you guess how old I am? Eh? 70? Five? No. I'm one year younger. 74. <laughs> But because I have been very careful about my body, you can't believe I'm 75 or 74. I meet people. I was uh, campaigning in Cape Town. I met a man who was gray, balding, and uh, I said, Who's older, me and you? He said, you are older than me. <laughs> no, no, no. He said, he was older than me. So I said, how old are you? He said, I'm 56. I said, yer. <laughs> yer. <laughs> and I could see he has been taxing his body. I never 
drank liquor in my life. And you will be surprised what is it that made me not to drink. I was not told. You know, when we grow up, you are told that a teacher is the best person, a teacher. So we're playing with the rim of a bicycle, pushing it with a small stick, making them our cars on the dead road. We found a teacher who had gone to church in the morning in his black suit, white shirt, with a tie. He was coming back from the church. It looks like from the church, he must have been drinking along the way. <laughs> Being a teacher, bad example. When he was getting off the road to where he stays, there was a hump of sand. He could not climb and move across because he has no power. The legs were weak. He fell. He had no power to rise up. He actually slept. He thought he's in the bed. He slept. <laughs> and vomited to himself. That's what made me to take the decision. Because I looked at this teacher. Then there was a Christian. And I said, if this food does this to you after eating it, it's not for me. <laughs> not for me. And it has helped me the rest of my life. <clears throat> In uh, 1991, I met a, a very famous policeman who was a special branch. They've now all disappeared. The police, which were called special branch. He said to me, you were lucky. We wanted to capture you in Switzerland. I said, why did you want to capture you? He said, we wanted to capture you, to arrest you, and kidnap you from Switzerland. He says, you know what saved you? We now know, because you did not drink. Because they used to put poison in the liquor or something to intoxicate you further and take you when you don't know. You will wake up in a cell. So I'm saying, liquor is not a good thing if you overtake it. It actually ruins your body and your character and your everything. Drugs are worse. So as a young man, love yourself. As a young girl, love yourself. <laughs> you must always be sober. Don't have time that people tell you what we were doing yesterday. You don't know. That's terrible. Be sober. Love yourself. Be clean. <clears throat> Be a person of God. Grow up <clears throat> respecting, because once we have, we have taken these things, the respect goes away. So, please, young people, these facilities are made to help the young people shape our future for themselves. Stay out of wrong things. Be healthy, have exercises, study, become even better than what you are when you get to the institution. Very important. Otherwise, who will govern this country when we are gone? If we are all drunk or drowsy? 
then the country will have no one to run. Maybe the elephants will come and run it. Who knows? <laughs> so it is absolutely important that the youth must know their government is helping them to be empowered so that they are better leaders tomorrow. Whether in politics you can be like uh, my good comrade, the professional politician, <laughs> <laughs> or a pastor, or anything, but whatever you'd be, you'll be useful to your people. Very important. Are we agreeing, young people? Yeah. Good. When I come back to Beaufort West, I will find you sober. <laughs> well, I thought I should just underline this point. Let us not be party to <clears throat> drug abuse or liquor abuse. You need to grow, start your family, have healthy children, <clears throat> be responsible, have a distant family, decent family. Hmm? You know when you are drowsy, I'm told you can't see properly. At times, if you are driving, you see two cars coming. You try to avoid the car, you go to the real car and hit it. <laughs> because there are two cars. <clears throat> so please, young people and elderly people, please be helpful to young ones so that they don't do wrong things. We are creating facilities for them to be better adults tomorrow, better citizens. It's very important. This is very important in ensuring that the youth in each and every area get opportunities which can improve their lives. And all these are efforts which ensure that together we move this country forward. It is important if we come from poor families, in a matter of few decades, those families must no longer be poor. Because we have empowered ourselves, we can now look after our siblings and we could look after our communities. The future of this country is open to us to make it better than any other time. We therefore congratulate the community and the youth in particular for this wonderful facility we are handing over today. Please look after it well so that the Youth Hub can serve generations to come. You must look after it, it is your own. It's an instrument for you to change your circumstances as you go forward. I'm going to come back during some <clears throat> few weeks time for something else. I want to find... <laughs> I want to find this community alert. I want to find the youth alert, <clears throat> benefiting, empowering themselves. So keep it well. Look after it. Make it even much better. Make us feel we should even build another one and another one because you are using it very well.
Thank you very much. Thank you. Well, a very encouraging speech there from the president, just uh, encouraging young people to stay sober, to stay away from uh, drugs and alcohol, and really encouraging them because of that opening of uh, the youth hub in Beaufort West, which is uh, what it seems to be quite an outstanding uh, facility there for young people. It's got state-of-the-art gym facilities, IT facilities, all to develop the skills of young people in the area and from rural areas. And this, of course, is just one of many such centres that will be rolled out, hopefully, across the country. Uh, so it's all about skills development and employment. And as I said, it is the first of its kind, and there are others that will follow on from that. Uh, so an encouraging message from the president in Beaufort West at that official opening of the Youth Hub. Well, we'll take a short break. Stay